A new ITFX documentary is jam-packed with new hair-raising claims and insights into how the royal family has operated for the past few decades. It includes how Prince Harry's life was seen as dispensable, whereas his older brother Prince William, as the future heir, was to be more heavily protected. The new series called The Real Crown, Inside the House of Windsor airs later this month and is also brimming with hilarious anecdotes and tidbits about members of the firm. Executive producer David Gover, of 72 Films, described ITV's new series as a definitive and landmark series of the royal family that tells a familiar story in an unfamiliar way. He said, a significant key to its distinctiveness is its range of contributors, the eyewitnesses to history. It's the story of the royal family from the people who were there. Here Express.co.uk takes a look at the bombshells revealed in the documentary. The late Queen Elizabeth II permitted Prince Harry to go to war, and not his older brother Prince William, because his death on the battlefield was acceptable. But William, as the future heir to the throne, was not permitted to head to the front line when the Afghanistan war broke out in 2001 because the risk was seen as too great. The decision is discussed at a meeting between the late Queen and General Sir Mike Jackson, former head of the British Army, which is disclosed in the documentary. Sir Mike said, she was very clear. She said, my grandsons have taken my shilling, therefore they must do their duty. And that was that. But it was decided that William as heir to the heir, the risk is too great. But for his younger brother, the risk was acceptable. This position was reiterated by Mark Cann, director of the British Forces Foundation, who said William was very keen to go but he was stopped from going to war due to his position as future king. Camilla met the former Archbishop of Canterbury, George Carey, at his son's flat in Peckham, London to get to know her and discuss the possibility of her marrying Charles, who was then the Prince of Wales. D.R. Carey, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury from 1991 to 2002, suggested the location to avoid attracting media attention and ensure the meeting was kept secret. He recalled, She walked through the front door and we had coffee together, we had an animated conversation and we talked about her relationship with Charles going way back to when they were teenagers. And after that I decided there was no way I could treat her as anything other than a really nice human being who is deeply in love with Charles. The Christian leader later gave his blessing for the pair to marry, despite his earlier comments that their union would cause a crisis for the church. The Duke of York's infamous sit-down interview on BBC News Night, where he defended his friendship with sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, was due to his overconfidence, an insider claimed. Tory peer Lord Patton discussed the royal's decision to give the interview, which sparked a huge public backlash and led to the Queen stripping him of his military honours, royal patronages and use of his HRH title, in the documentary. He said, he thought he was capable of getting away with some answer which inevitably turns around and hits him over the head. It says he's not plugged into the same reality as the rest of us. The failed attempt to kidnap Princess Anne in 1974 is detailed within the series, with her former bodyguard Jim Beaton detailing the terrifying ordeal. The Queen's daughter, then aged 23, was travelling back to Buckingham Palace after attending a charity event with her then-husband Captain Mark Phillips. A car overtook them and forced the vehicle to stop by blocking their route. Its driver, Ian Ball, then exited the car holding two handguns and descended on the royal limousine. The assailant shot Anne's bodyguard in the shoulder and then tried to get her out of the car. Staying calm, the royal famously replied, not bloody.